Good morning. Hey, Daphne, how's it going there today? I'm doing well. How are you? Great. Thank you very much. Am I getting you from Virginia? Yes, you are. Yes, I am. So many things I want to ask you about. I mean, come on. Start. It's the cookbook. Let's start with that. Uh, when okay. did you actually put it together? I've been putting it together for 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> I've been collecting recipes from people that I've worked with, old recipes from home, um, things that I've discovered as I've been cooking in these past uh, 50 years. And finally, I said, oh, let me get this off my computer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I decided to publish it. So I did. Usually, to use a celebrity cliche, like the cookbook is what you put out when things are not happening. Not the case in your career at all. You got the business of Christmas coming out. There's the HBO Max reunion with the Fresh Prince cast. In general, you keep busy. But what I love about your career is that you've always broken barriers and you always push the ball forward. Uh, people tell you, you can't do this, and you did that. Uh, how much of that is by design, and how much of that is just things happened as flukes? Uh, I'm, I was born blessed with lots of gifts that I can manifest in different ways. And I have had the opportunity to be in the right place at the right time and smart enough to take advantage of the opportunity. So I think it's a little bit of kismet and a little bit of preparation. Sure. So in the case of, say, the cookbook, did you have it, have all these recipes all these years and then reach out to an agent? Or did someone overhear you once and go, hey, you got a cookbook? <laughs> I published it myself. Okay. So that, that's what I'm outside. getting at. Actual <laughs> initiative right there. So when you have a cookbook like that done in the can, are you the kind of person that goes, I want to have a second cookbook? Because I know you do have a website related to the cooking. I have a website related to all the other things I do and a website related to the cookbook. And I haven't been very good at focusing on the cookbook site lately because I've been so busy on the other sites because I design and I make clothes and I make masks and I do photography. I do so many other things that I have to apportion my time right. as to what I'm pushing at the time. And uh, the cookbook is just starting to be revamped up for pushing. <laughs> yeah. And I just realized that the stock on the um, cookbook has diminished to uh, maybe 10 copies. So <laughs> I called my, pub my uh, printer yeah, yeah. and I said, hit it, do another run. I do everything on the computer. I format it. I do all the editing. I do everything myself. And I send a file to the printer and tell them what kind of paper I want to use and, and get a proof and say, okay, let's go with it. I've been working with the same printer for about, oh, 15 years. And okay. I've published four books before the cookbook. Yes. I do photography yeah. books. And I've done those myself too. I've edited them and formatted them and published them mm -hmm. myself. And that I sell them be... on the website or live or different uh, gift shops sell some of the things that I've made, note cards, lots of different things. I've, I've had a great journey. You have, you have had, you had, it's, it's all those kinds of verbs there, but you beat me to it. I was going to say the photography books, because there's been multiple photography books. Again, a lot of people go, I'm going to do a photography book, and that's it. They've exhausted all their photographs that are kind of great. And also, uh, pho photography kind of books are less common because the, the playing field's been leveled a little bit where anyone can think that they are a great photographer based on a couple of filters and all that. But did you actually study photography or are you self-taught? Oh, no, I didn't study. Uh, I learned photography through doing it. Mm -hmm. And I've had a camera since I was nine years old. So I've been doing it a long time since you had to put film in the camera. Right. <laughs> so um, my father was an amateur photographer. So he always took pictures of the family and places that we went. And I've got lots and lots and lots of the photos that he took. And uh, in my travels, 
I've always taken pictures. I'm married mm -hmm. to a man who is also a photographer and he always has a camera and is taking pictures. So I have an accumulation of thousands of pictures and culling them uh, is deciding what topic I want to deal with at the time. And for about 10 years, I was dealing with doors, solely doors. I would only take pictures of doors and I was looking through all of my files and there were doors there. And I think it's because my degree from Northwestern University is yeah. in interior design and architecture. And I always focus on the details in architecture and doors were talking to me. And they told me, uh, I am a metaphor for life. So consider me a passageway to adventure, curiosity, opportunity, and then tell people how to dream by looking at the details in their life and to notice all those details because they enrich in the journey that you're traveling. It's not just getting from A to B, mm -hmm. but is what between A and B that makes your life very rich. So I encourage people to look at details and I did it through doors. The man that you mentioned, I am also a fan of. Uh, I knew of him from being on Sister Sister, but then when I learned that him and Tom Dreesen were a comedy team and all the barriers that they broke, I don't think anybody realized that. So you two are one of the most multifaceted couples I've ever read about, heard about, and you two are also multi-hyphenate career kind of people. Like if I were to say, what is Daphne? Is she an actress? Is she a model, a photographer, yeah. author, yeah. a cook, a designer? Yeah. Yes, yes yeah. to all those, but yeah. how do you personally like to be thought of or introduced? as mom or grandma. <laughs> I, I, it depends on the situation. Some things call for the light to be shined on my acting. Some uh, places where I am calls for my light to be shined on photography yeah. or on designing and creating these wonderful uh, wearable art pieces that I've been doing for years. And I like all the situations and I'm light on my feet so I can be ready when I get into a situation. It sounds to me like you're creating something in some form every single day. Do I have that right? You have that right. And that's because God gave me all of these gifts. And these gifts are the talents and they're the, I have to express and manifest all these gifts or God's going to be mad at me for not doing that. <laughs> so well I, just, I just love being able to express different things that I am capable of doing. And you just mentioned stuff on top of the stuff that I've mentioned already, being a mother and a grandmother and all that. So a lot of people, when I say, well, what is life like when you're not working? It doesn't sound like there's ever a dull moment over there. But do you have any surprising hobbies you you? Do, the world doesn't know about it. And I ask that for a reason, because mm -hmm. people who are creative for a living, I find there's two ways that they go. One is that when they're not working, they're still doing work-related stuff. They're watching movies, they're studying, they're talking with other peers in the industry. And then the other one is, I have nothing to do with work when I'm not working, family, cooking, that's it. Uh, no, not family, because they're all in, scattered around the, the United States, but sure. um, I do a lot of boards. I'm on lots of wonderful art boards, Child Fund International Board, the Ballet Board. I get a kick out of encouraging other people to share their arts and to share their gifts whatever they are. And with Child Fund, share your gift of money and time to people who just need something to eat. Mm -hmm. And when I find a group of people who are about that, who are doing it well, I love the opportunity to assist. Mm -hmm. And a common thread is all these projects that you've t spoken about so far, they actually get done. 
<laughs> there's a lot of people want to call themselves a philanthropist and they like talking about being a philanthropist. They don't actually do the, the last 10% of it, not your case. So with all this productivity, how do you usually go about getting things done? Are you a big calendar person? I am strictly a calendar person and I have to put it on the calendar and I have to abide by the calendar or things will get very messy in overbooking and double booking and right. oh I'm supposed to be in India oh no I can't do that <laughs> so I have to keep a calendar and it is the bane of my existence to try to get my husband to put his things on the calendar <laughs> that we share but sometimes it happens <laughs> and sometimes he says Oh, well, I plan, mm. well, you unplan that because <laughs> you planned something else already. Well, you beat me to it again. I was going to ask, well, is Tim a calendar guy or not? You just answered that one. And being two people who have been, although you both do other things, you've been creative for a living. Has that been difficult at times or have you two been blessed because the work has kept coming when you didn't think it was going to keep coming? Tim is the creative incubator. I mean, he is so creative. He wakes up in the morning and says, I have an idea. And he goes with it. He thrives on being creative. Mm -hmm. I'm creative and it's okay. But he's creative with a passion. Yeah. <laughs> and he, is, he works probably seven days a week. I have to encourage him every once in a while, I said, take some time for you <laughs> and so he's he's busy most of the time and that's wonderful when we were working together it was i was me trying to keep him balanced with real life because he's so passionate about the projects that he does so it's a yin and a yang and we go along and sometimes i just let him fly and it just He's going to be busy for the next two weeks and I keep myself busy doing something else and being wherever he needs me to be to complete his task. So while the world is undeniably a mess right now and no one knows if it's going to be a mess for one more day, one more week, one more year, 10 more years, no one knows any of that. I really appreciate hearing how you've kept busy on um, projects that you're passionate about. Same with your husband and all that. It's yeah. really refreshing to hear that this isn't an SOS call, this interview, because <laughs> a lot of these have turned out to be SOS calls. Ooh, ooh, I've been blessed. I've been really blessed. This has been a trying year because of all this COVID and all these um, disparate political things going on. But uh, I've managed to fill the time with things that I think are purposeful. I'm just always looking for a purpose and to fill that purpose and knowing that we are should be using masks every day all day everywhere we are mm -hmm. i've been creating masks and i've been selling masks online since i can't sell them in person mm -hmm. i sell them online and they've been very successful i keep selling masks because they're finally realizing me you got to have that it's a good tool to have Oh, yeah. as well as washing up and keeping your social distance. But this has also been a time where you get to go inside. Since you can't go outside, mm -hmm. you go inside and you say, what do I want to fulfill next? And I look in my little book of, hmm, I got this gift and that gift. Where will I focus this time? So I've been able to do masks and I've been able to do some custom uh, work for some coats for clients. Wow. And I've able, I do my calendar every year. And this year I got my calendar out and been selling that well. And the cookbook is evergreen. So I just mm -hmm. keep pushing the cookbook and encouraging people since you're at home, why don't you cook? If you don't know how, I can teach you through my cookbook. Right, that's all fantastic. So do you got time for two quick questions? And then you I've have three. time for anything you want. Okay, now hearing all this productivity and forward thinking, you don't strike me as a person that watches eight hours of TV a day, especially as it's your, it's your trade. But 
Do you have a TV recommendation or two that you could pass along for somebody who's just finished their last five binge watching experiences? <laughs> Let's see, Sister Sister just got uh, picked up on Netflix. So if you want to just binge on Sister Sister, that's a fun show to watch. Absolutely. You'll see my husband. I'll pop up every once in a while too. Yeah. Um, there are lots of things, but we concentrate more on creating the content hmm. that needs to go on all these multi platforms that we have. So my husband has just launched a new television network. Really? And it's called GFNTV.com. GFNTV, I think that's what it is. What does that stand for? Good Family TV. Network TV? No, it's a streaming network uh, called GFNTV. <laughs> oh, dear. I hope I got that right. I'll put the correct address, whatever it is, in the article. <laughs> okay. Probably. I'll go find it and send it to you. Um, uh, but you can get to it through LGCY, which is legacy, mm -hmm. scrunched up for the young people, LGCY uh, of a people mm -hmm. dot com, network dot com. That's oh, I got it. LGCY of a people network dot com. Okay. And you can see all the uh, content he is putting up from documentaries that he's created over the years to uh shorts from the students that he's taught around the world, Nigeria, London, South Africa. He's got lots and lots of content there. So if you're looking for something to watch, that's a good place to start. Okay, I'm going to be clicking as soon as we hang up. And my clothes are for you, Daphne. Any last words for the kids? For the kids, are we t tell me an age range of what you think kids is for me. Based on how long that you've been working, there's a chance that people who like you are 10 and there's a chance that people like you are 70 and or 30. It, it kind of nick at night and everything. Who knows anymore how old your fans are? We're on our third generation of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, so. <laughs> exactly. Like if the Beatles are up to maybe five generations, you're, yes. you're at three-ish. So uh, yeah. I guess any positive words can, that you can dispense would work. With work, uh, remember to always, well, never let the successes go to your head and never let the failures go to your heart. My husband taught me that. Wow, that is deep. Uh... I guess I shouldn't have expected anything differently. <laughs> but <laughs> thank you so much for your time. Thank and you for you having me. And just keep up all the greatness that you're doing. Really. All right. Don't forget HBO Max around Thanksgiving for that Fresh Prince reunion. Looking forward to that and your second cookbook. Thanks again, Daphne. Yes. Be well. Thank you. Take care. Outro cast.